This is a lower second molar with flap extension. The first thing we have to do is plan the case. So when you open up Blue Sky Plan, you'll see this screen with your cross-sectional screen, your axial screen, panoramic screen, and the 3D screen. The first thing we recommend in this case is to go to the 3D screen and select the articulated model. What this does for you is it provides the outline of the opposing tooth in your cross-sectional view, as you can see right here. We next would go to the panoramic screen, and here we would size the implant. This is you know, maybe a, a 5 by 11 5 implant. And then we use the abutment as a virtual tooth. In this case, the abutment was sized at about 10 millimeter diameter. So you can move this into position, and you can see your mesial distal orientation. You can move your abutment against the distal of the tooth, and right off the bat, your implant is in a pretty nice position. We next go to the cross-sectional screen, and here you can see the implant is placed. I can see the outline of the crest, so it gives me some indication right now of how thick the gingiva is over the implant, and that has implications for the vertical placement of the implant. Secondly, the center line of the implant, in this case, was arranged to meet the lingual cusp of the opposing molar, as it should be. And so now the mesial distal orientation of this implant is set quite easily. We then go back to the 3D screen, and we select centered model. The centered model is a 3D image of a model in which there is a reference point, and that reference point is in the ideal location for this implant. For a second molar implant, the entry point would be six to seven millimeters from the distal of the opposing, of the adjacent tooth. And then we can see where the center line of our implant is relative to this ideal position. You may not always be able to get it in the ideal position, but at least you know where you are relative to the ideal position. And this is one way in which you can overcome the looking at 3D in 2D problem, because this is based on the, the ideal position is based upon a model, which you can see in hand, not on a 3D in 2D. You can also then look at this and use the abutment as a virtual tooth and see quite accurately exactly the relationship between the future tooth and the adjacent tooth. Finally, you can look at the occlusal relationship, and you can see exactly where the center line of the implant will meet the upper molar. And as a final quality control test, you can look at all the views and just check it out to make sure everything is okay, and then this plan can be submitted or fabrication of a drill guide. So now let's look at the first case clinically. It's a lower second molar. What we've done here is we placed the uh, spear drill in a plastic insert in the tube guide and took a film just to illustrate the trajectory of this implant. And here you can see in this case, we use the tube guide to start. The plastic insert is placed with the spear drill to create a bleeding point. We created a pilot hole. In this case, it was a flap exposure. And one thing I wanted to highlight is that the guide in no way impedes your ability to reflect the site, reflect the flap, or to access the site, or to see the site. The, this is a lower second molar. Here you can see the drill is inserted at an angle, it's brought upright, engaging the guide hole, and brought to depth. And you can see how the depth stop engages the top of the guide to control depth. When we look at this view, you can see an implant, a, a surgical analog in place illustrating the position within the guide hole. And we do this sequentially with each drill until you reach the desired diameter of your osteotomy. And again, here you can see final drill in place 
in the center of the guide hole. With a system also, you can use the system with your countersink, your tap, and your implant driver. And as you can see in the top left panel, that's a countersink centered in the guide hole used to countersink the osteotomy. In the top right, the drill stop fit the tap, and so the tap is being used centered in the guide hole. And finally, in the bottom panel, the implant driver is centered in the guide hole to place the implant. And as we'll see in a later case, um, that can be a very, very critical piece because in type 3 or type 4 bone, when you're using self-tapping implants, they can find their own, own way regardless of how the osteotomy was positioned. Finally, you take a look at the finished case. You can see the implant position. And when you go to the bottom panel, you can see that the position of the implant clinically is exactly as it was in the model. 